Well, there is one thing that I wanted to jump into when it comes to just something that you said earlier and you kind of sprinkled it into the conversation around the experiment tracking now becoming prompt tracking and if that is going to be the evolution and I would love to hear your thoughts on that because it feels like there is a definite need for prompt tracking but I don't know that experiment tracking is going to 100% go away it still feels like there's a ton of use cases for that and so how are you looking at both of those? I said this st- sarcastically. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so again, I, I, I am looking from jobs to be done perspective. Uh, so in a short, from short time, pers- let's say one year perspective. And this is what I, what I see and I can share with you. I'm, we are seeing more traction and demand for experiment tracking, even without large language model, I, I think it is a side effect of a bi- of a bigger investments into bro- like broadly speaking AI. So yes, we have a new big sum that makes everything else looks way smaller, right? But the reality is that there are a lot of synergies. So. So I think it is, it is why we see it, but when it comes to experiment tracking, let's, let's discuss what it is about. I, by the way, I really don't, but we use this because like, maybe you will need to, <laughs> you will be using with MLOps name, we use experiment tracker because name, because it is what market understands. But if you look at the jobs to be done of an experiment tracker, they are way behind, beyond just experimenting. Experimenting sounds pure research, no production. So I would say that main jobs to be done of an experiment tracker would be about on one hand, when you're building models, you want to understand what is happening. You want to understand the building process. You want to debug it. You want to compare it with other experiments. So in this way, you would understand like whether the model you're building is going into the right direction or not. You want to version it. So you have some level of reproducibility, some way to maybe share particular model or share it for a feedback. And you want to make it in a way that is, that you can hand the model over to a ops team. So. From this perspective, when I think about prompt engineering, that is quite a different way of building models. I'm not even say, I'm not even sure that we should be calling prompt engineering a pro- as a engineering. model building process, right? Oh yeah. I'm because the model like is stateless. When you think about, okay, fine tuning, for instance, is not available for the latest models. It is for GPT-3, but GPT-3.5 and 4, as far as I remember, you cannot fine tune it. Yes, sir. So we, what you're left, you're left with how you will craft prompt plus more, right? You can, you can configure agents and, and build a prompt in a sequential way using different models. So okay. yes, it is engineering, um, but here we are talking about building phase, how I would understand how, how does it work, etc. So. Yes, I see that, and it is on our roadmap, I see a support of prompt visualizations or chain visualizations, integration with, with long chain is an obvious thing, um, but it's just the beginning. Uh, I think that to really support ML, maybe not only ML, teams that are building such models and using them in production, We will eventually would also need to think about how we are going, how we are going to support and what, how, what are the methods, how we are going to validate those prompts, because today it is very much human opinion, right? I'm looking at this prompt. I'm looking at this prompt. This prompt looks better. There are ways to like, there are mm, ideas. Let's try, let's do this validation also with foundational models that would be judging which, which set of prompts is better, but by the end of the day, we would also need to figure out 
how we are testing props that would symbolize models. We would need to, we will need to think about how we are going to, what, what are, what, what would be the techniques we can really use in order to update those models? Because those models, like, yes, like if you are asking very like questions that's with generic context, maybe you don't need to update or you can just update with the new version of GPT available. But if you are building, a, let's call it a solution based on foundational model that is doing something specific with your data, then maybe fine tuning, maybe it will be done by an agent that would ask your kind of smaller classical model for mm, some prediction and, and the prediction will be taken into consideration by, by the foundational model. So I, I think, I think we will also need to be able to connect the dots, what is using what, which version. So it is very much what experiment tracker is doing today. Mm.